welcome you to this week's edition of Cloud of Witnesses, uh, the theme we have been considering since the year began, and uh, we give glory to the Almighty God for the revelation He has been making available to us since we started learning under this particular glorious theme, Cloud of Witnesses. And we are still continuing. This week, we're going to continue to learn important faith and life lessons from the characters mentioned in Hebrews, Hebrews 11. Last week, we spoke about the destroyer, and it's my prayer that all those things we learned about the destroyers, we will not experience any in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, so this week, we're going to look at uh, two groups. So I'll call it characters, plural. So the characters we'll be considering this week are the firstborn and the Egyptians. We're going to be looking at the firstborn and the Egyptians. Let's take Hebrews 11, 28 to 29 for that. Hebrews 11, 28 to 29. The Bible says, By faith he kept the Passover and the application of blood, so that the destroyer of the firstborn will not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land, but when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. Let me take that text again. By faith, Hebrews 11, 28 to 29. I will, I will take it slowly so I can follow. By faith, he kept the Passover, talking about Moses, and the application of blood, so that the destroyer of the firstborn will not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as on dry land. But when the Egyptians tried to do so, they were drowned. Now, let's learn, let's learn some wonderful lessons from this, uh, uh, these particular characters. You know, there were two groups of firstborns mentioned in these texts. The firstborn of the Israelites and the firstborn of the Egypt- Egyptians. So, the the firstborns of the Israelites and the firstborn of the Egyptians, those are the two groups mentioned in that text we just read. And if you read the entire chapter of Exodus chapter 12, you will see how things played out for these two groups of firstborns. Things played out differently for them. Now, a quick analysis. The Israelites firstborn, humans and animals, they were living at Goshen in Egypt, their land of captivity. The Egyptians firstborns, humans and animals, were living all over Egypt, their native and free land. So the Israelites were like slaves. They were, they were in the land of captivity in Egypt and they had firstborns, animals and humans. The Egyptians' firstborns, humans and animals were living all over Egypt as free because they are native land. Now the destroyer killed all the firstborns, humans and animals of the Egyptians in one night. The destroyer did not touch any of the firstborns, human and animals of the Israelites at all. You see, so the Egyptians experienced the ministry of the destroyer that we mentioned last week. The Israelites were equally living in Egypt, but they were spared. The Israelites firstborn were not touched. Humans and animals alike, they were not touched and they were living in the same in the same place all of them were firstborns and all of them were living in the same country so what what then was the distinguishing factor if all the firstborns were living in egypt and some firstborns died some were not touched what distinguished them because it was the same country same country same night so what was the distinguishing factor what separated the firstborn of the Israel Israelites from the firstborn of the Egyptians? You want to know what it is? Very simple. It was the covenant site they were on. Period. They were, they were distinguished because of the site of the covenant they were on. The Israelites were on the right side of God's covenant. The Egyptians were on the wrong side of God's covenant. You can look at Genesis 15, 13 to 15. Genesis, uh, Genesis 15, 13 to 15. God promised to judge the nation that will afflict Abraham's seed. You know, God told Abraham what was going to happen to his children. They were going to be, his, you know, uh, captives. They were going to be in the land of captivity. They will be afflicted. But God made a promise that the nation that will afflict the Israelites shall be judged. God promised to judge the nation that will afflict Abraham's seed. 
so the egyptians had to be judged to establish god's integrity there's no way they will not there's no way they will not be judged because god keeps every promise he makes so the egyptians had to be judged to establish god's integrity they were on the wrong side the egyptians were on the judgment side of god why the Israelites were on the favor side of God. That's why their own firstborn survived. Why the firstborn of those on the judgment side of God, I mean, they died. So it was a function of the covenant side they were on. And that's why I have this next question for you. On which side of God's covenant are you standing? Pause and think about that a little. On which side of God's covenant are you standing where are you standing if god decides to judge your country or even your church today you know god said judgment will start from his house if god decides to come down this moment and judge your country or judge your church are you going to be spared or are you going to spare or is are you going down with those who are not pleasing to him what's going to be your experience He's going to spare you like he spared the firstborn of the Israelites or you are going down with those who are not pleasing to God like the Egyptians. Because you should know. You, sh- you, don't, you don't want to find out when judgment comes. You want to know before that happens. If God decides to pass through your country tonight, he decides to pass through your land, pass through your community, pass through your family, pass through your church to bring judgment, is he going to spare you based on the covenant side you are on or you are going down with those who are not pleasing to him think about that are you on the lost side that's exactly what i'm driving at are you sure that you're on the lost side or you don't even know the side you are on are you on the lost side or are you not on the lost side did you also notice that it was the same red sea that opened up for the israelites to cross over that completely drowned the Egyptians who attempted to cross over. We read that in Hebrews 11, 29. The same Red Sea that opened up for the Israelites to cross over, it was the same Red Sea that completely drowned the Egyptians who attempted to cross over. Same Red Sea, not another one, same Red Sea. It opened up for a group, and it closed on the other group. And of course, this is not surprising at all because, you know, it's God's way, it's God's way of making all flesh know the difference between those who are with him and those who are not. You remember he mentioned in Malachi 3, 17 to 18, Malachi 3, 17 to 18 says, he's going to distinguish between those who are his and those who are not. God always has a way of making all flesh to know the difference between those who are with him and those who are not. That's why the Red Sea could see some people. He checked their particulars. He checked their identity. Oh, these ones are on the right side of God. He opened up and they passed. Another group came. The Red Sea checked their profile, checked their, you know, the identity, looked them up. And he discovered they were on the wrong side of God's covenant. And he closed up on them. He closed up on them. It's very simple. The Red Sea checked them out saw some people on God's right side of the covenant, opened up, they passed through. Other people, other group, same Red Sea, he looked them up. He couldn't find anything that looked like God in them. They were on the wrong side of God's covenant and he closed up on them. And and that's one quick lesson. That's one very quick lesson. Just because you see people passing through the Red Sea should not make you attempt to pass through. You want to find out what made the Red Sea open for them. You need to know the covenant side people are on. It's a very big risk to see your friends doing things or to see a Christian brother or Christian sister or your church member or you see somebody doing something, you know, taking some steps in the realm of the spirit and you say, well, if he's doing it, I can as I can do it as well. And you go and try it. You will be surprised. When you see people having some results in the body of Christ, find out what covenant side they are on. And sign up for the same. Sign up for the same. Because if you are not on the right side of God's covenant, Red Sea will never open for you to pass through. It's going to close on you. And there's no sentiment. 
The rest he doesn't want to know whether you are wearing clothes. And when I'm saying resty this time around, I'm saying it metaphorically. You know, the situations of life, things do they they know, they know. They know, they know who is on the Lord's side. They know who is not. So when the Red Sea of life looks, when it looks you up, is it going to see God's hand upon you? Or is it going to see that you are empty? There's nothing about God in you. And it's not sentiment like I mentioned. It's not whether you're tall or short, you're, you're, you're fat, you're slim, you are from one country, you are from one continent. The Red Sea doesn't want to know whether you are, whether you are, you know, you you understand Hebrew, you understand Greek, you that's not this problem. They, there's only one question Resi wants to ask before deciding whether to open up or to close down. Are you on God's covenant right side? Are you on the right side of God's covenant? The answer is yes. Pass over. Pass through me. Cross. Another group, are you on the Lord's side? You are not. It closes on you. Very simple. Very simple. And it's not your resi. That's the way situations of life always. You remember when Moses was crying to God, you know, he was saying, uh, let your presence go with us. You remember when he was leading these children of Israel, say, God, let your presence go with us. Because he now says something very important. He say, how are we going to be distinguished upon the surface of the earth from all other people if your presence does not go with us? Do you know the meaning of that? Moses was crying to God, let your presence go with us because that is the only way we are going to be distinguished from every other person on the surface of the earth. And that tells you something very quickly. It means everywhere you go, regardless of the country, regardless of where you find yourself, your office, your church, your country, your community, everywhere you go, everywhere you find people, there are always two categories of people on earth. Always. Every time those who carry God's presence and those who do not carry God's presence. And that was why Moses was saying, please, we want people to distinguish us that we carry your presence. We want rest to be opening up. So please let your presence be with us. Keep us on the right side of your covenant. So there's no middle ground. It's either you are on the lost side or you are not. And if you are not, it is very wrong for you to, ex- for you to expect to experience what the, pe- what the people who are on the right side are experiencing. It's very wrong. That's fraud. You are not on the right side. How dare you? Uh, wh- wh- what makes you think Red Sea will open up for you? Why attempt to cross the Red Sea when you know you are not on the lost side? You have to be on the lost. I cannot say it. In, I cannot say it enough. I can't overemphasize it. I cannot overemphasize this point. That's why I'm dwelling on this so well. Please be sure you are on the Lord's side because a day is coming if it has not come already a day is surely coming where all that will matter is on which side you are on your money will not matter your position your political affiliation will not matter your status will not matter nothing will matter in life only one thing will matter on which side are you standing right or wrong and you don't want to get to that period. You don't want to get to that time when, when that will happen, when that's what will only matter for you to find out whether you're on the right or the, on the wrong side. It's going to be too late. You can't, you can't be in the middle of the rest seat be, to now begin to find out, am I on the right side or on the wrong? You are going to be drowned. It's too late. It's too late because by the time the Egyptians entered the Red Sea and they saw what was happening, they said, oh, they, they, they are Lord, their God is fighting for them. They wanted to run. They could not run anymore. The Red Sea closed up on them. It was too late. You don't want to get to that situation before you find out whether you're on the lost side or not or probably before you suicide. It's very, very important. I needed to emphasize that seriously. There are two categories of people on earth, those who carry God's presence, those who do not. If you are not carrying God's presence, it's a risky, in fact, it's a very, it's a big risk. You are living a risky life because anything can happen. You are defenseless. You are a city like a broken, like, like a broken wall. No, you are, anything can happen to you. But when you're on the lost side, no matter what happens, the presence of the Lord will be with you and that's your guarantee of victory. Hallelujah. It's very important. 
if you are living in sin for instance you know to further drive home this point if you are living in sin for instance it's obvious you are on the wrong side of god's covenant because psalm 7 verse 11 to 13 psalm 7 verse 11 to 13 says something very important say god is angry with the wicked every day god is angry with sinners every day every time you hear good money god is angry with the wicked and when he's angry with the wicked, how will the rest be open for such, for such a person? God is angry with the wicked. How will the wicked, how will the person experience favor? How will situations of life not consume such a fellow? So living in sin qualifies you for the wrong side of God. The wrong side of God's covenant, which is the judgment side. And if you remember uh, what we learned last week, that is the side that activates the ministry of the destroyer which i pray you will never be on so if you are still living in sin you need to switch you will need to accept god's offer of salvation by surrendering your life to jesus christ so that you can cross over to the right side of his covenant and that's the beautiful thing about this this whole thing you can cross you can cross there's no side that's permanent there's no side that's permanent you can cross from the wrong side of god's covenant and come to the right side of God's covenant and you begin to enjoy what people on the right side are enjoying and unfortunately you can also cross from God's right hand right side of covenant to the wrong side and suffer what those who are on the judgment side are suffering I pray that will not be your portion because that's what happens when you backslide when you stop following Jesus when you stop following God you have simply crossed from the right side to the wrong side and whatever happens to those on the wrong side, you qualify for them as well. I pray that will not be your portion in the name of Jesus. Which is why, you know, anytime from now, when I want to, when I give you opportunity to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, those who want to do that for the first time, you're going to do it. And those who have backslidden, you have gone back, you have switched side, you have crossed to the wrong side, you need to come back to the right side. It's very, very important. It's very, very important. And as I close, also note, that Pharaoh was the one who triggered God's anger, but the na- whole nation paid for it. Take note of that. Pharaoh was the one who triggered the anger of God, but when God's judgment landed, the whole nation of Egypt paid for it. It was not only Pharaoh's firstborn who died. All, all, A-L-L, all the firstborn of the Egyptians, from the highest to the lowest, from the richest to the forest including firstborn of animals they all died and it was pharaoh who sinned it was pharaoh who activated the anger of god but the entire land of egypt paid for it what does that tell you straight away pray for your leaders pray for your leaders because when judgment comes those who didn't buy may be made to pay as well they may be made to pay as well pray please pray Pray for your prime ministers, pray for your presidents, pray for your senators, pray for your, you know, your husbands, you know, family leaders, pray for your head of family, pray for all your leaders. Pray, pray for all your leaders in church, in the secular, sec, uh, secular world, wherever. Those the Lord has placed as leaders in your country, wherever you are, pray for your leaders because if they take a wrong step and they activate God's anger, When the destroyer lands, when God's judgment begins to burn, (laughs) it may burn beyond your leader's house. It may burn beyond your leader's life. An entire nation may be made to pay for the sin of a leader. It's very possible. The Bible says, He who is greedy of gain, troubleth his own household. Just think about that. A man is greedy of gain. You are greedy. And the Bible says your entire household will suffer trouble. Your household will suffer trouble. Who is greedy? The man, the head of the family is greedy. Who is paying? The household. You see? So your, 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 your father or probably your husband is a gambler. Your husband is a wicked person. And you just say, well, that's his life. It's not his life. Pray. Pray. Because when judgment comes you will partake either directly or indirectly you will partake even if nothing happens to you if 
God strikes that particular man, if God strikes this leader or God strikes, maybe God forbid, you know, the head of the family, there will no longer be peace in that family. If the, fa- if the person is the breadwinner, what do you think is going to happen to the members of the family? Even if he's not the breadwinner, something happens to him, probably God's judgment lands, you begin to carry him about prayer, you know, prayer houses, you begin to take him to, uh, take him to hospitals, whatever, just running at a skater, you have also lost your peace. You can't rest. That's pain. You are pain. You are not sick, but you are the one carrying him about. You are equally pain. You see what I'm talking about? So you want peace. You want rest. Then pray for your head. Pray for your leaders, wives. Pray for your husbands. Members, pray for your pastors. If the devil captures your pastor and he begins to dish out demonic doctrines from the pulpit, the whole church is in trouble. The, the old church is in trouble so please pray pray for your leaders pray for your leaders i pray as you continue to do this as you begin to pray for your leaders the lord will answer your prayers and the lord will help you to continue to pray for these leaders it's very important the lord will help you. and if you're a leader listening to me you will not take wrong steps the lord will keep your steps the lord will keep you from taking wrong steps in the mighty name of jesus that's the word of the lord for us for this week it's very very important uh, we've learned concerning the firstborn and Egyptians. The most important thing I wanted to take away from this episode is de- find out on which side of God's covenant are you standing. If it's the right, praise God, remain there. Don't shift. If it's the wrong side, cross right away before judgment comes. And also learn to pray for your leaders. If you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ, this will be the moment to do so. And it's also an opportunity to cross over from the wrong side of God's covenant to his right side. So if you want to do that, you're going to say this prayer now. Say it after me. Say, Lord Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, I want to be on the right side of your covenant. I want to be on the right side of your covenant. I forsake my sinful ways. I forsake my sinful ways and accept you as my Lord and Savior today. Amen. Let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, thank you once again for your word. We give you glory, honor, and adoration for what you have taught us this week. Thank you so much for the revelation of your word. Lord, be exalted in the name of Jesus. Lord, we just want to remain. For those of us who are already on your right side, we want to remain on the right side of your covenant. Father, please keep us there. Establish us there. In the name of Jesus. Let nothing take us away from the right side of your covenant. In the name of Jesus. For your children who have been on the wrong side, who have decided to cross this moment, Lord, please cross them over to the right side and keep them established there as well in the name of jesus pray for all our leaders anything they will do that will bring your wrath against us lord almighty please don't let them do it keep them from errors keep them from inviting your judgment in the mighty name of jesus lord i pray for those who have surrendered their life to jesus christ this moment accept them in the beloved write their names in the book of life and beginning from now when they call upon your name answer speedily thank you father for answering our prayers return all the glory to you In Jesus' mighty and unfailing name, we have prayed. Amen.